Posters, the visual abstract. Aloha, I'm Katherine Fulford from the University of Hawaii, and with me is my design assistant, Anuhea Nakahara. This presentation is brought to you by the Association for the Advancement of Computing and Education. They bring you many wonderful conferences worldwide. In this presentation, you'll see splash screens that show the wonderful places that you might go. Today we'll be covering why posters are beneficial, how to make it your own, elements of a great poster, and poster offenses. Why posters are beneficial. Like moths to a flame, you can interest people in your paper by having a beautiful poster. It gives you a chance to talk one-on-one -on -one with people directly, get to know them, make them interested in you, and meet their needs. It helps you show off key findings, your organization, and you, because it's a great place to make valuable connections with potential collaborators or even future employers. How to make it your own. Think to yourself, what is your purpose at the conference? And then you can focus your poster and your presentation on that. Some people use projections or laptops for interaction. Make sure to be prepared and consider bringing business cards so that people will remember you, brochures, perhaps copies of your paper, or you could use many versions of your poster on paper. Elements of a well-done poster much like writing an abstract, there are key elements that make it successful. Here is a helpful way to remember elements of a well-done poster. P for pictures and visuals, O for original content, S for size and simplicity, T for title and text, E for emphasis, and R for relevance. We'll go through each of these now. Pictures and visuals. Try to find pictures that draw your eye, things that are interesting and fascinating so that people will want to walk up to your poster. Remember that words can actually be used as visuals. Think of how you might be able to do this. Charts and graphs of key findings are particularly helpful. But please, use logos purposefully Using the logo of a conference doesn't really make sense. It's much better to use a logo of your organization. Unity is a very important part of making a good poster. What this means is that all parts of a visual are tied together through overlapping spacing, lines, color, texture, shape, or focus. Let's see how this is done. If you look at the visual in front of you, it's not very unified. It's all spread apart. Just by bringing the elements closer together, we have better unity, but it's still not enough. What can we do to fix it? Well, what we can do is we can add a solid background of a different color that pulls it all together. Original content. Great posters start with great papers, so making sure that your paper is good to begin with is one of the best ways to have a good poster. If you're making a poster for your organization, not from a paper, think of it as a visual brochure. If you have graphs or charts that are important to your paper, share a couple to entice the viewer. Visuals should be original or used with permission. You shouldn't just go to the internet and pick anything that you want. Make sure that you have permission or request permission from the author. Sometimes people use Creative Commons and they allow you the right to use the material with their consent for certain purposes. Be sure to check. Every research poster should contain the purpose, 
the context, the study, as well as the findings. Size and Simplicity Be sure to follow the poster size guidelines. Not doing so can get you in big trouble. I was at a conference once where many people had misinterpreted the size guidelines and because they did they had posters that were way too wide. Make sure that you know what the horizontal and the vertical positions are. Distance. What can people see? You want people to see your poster from across the room. That way they're drawn to come and talk with you. Less is more. Note the simplicity of this poster. The three columns and clear headers organize the content nicely. Now I'm going to demonstrate how you can use the rule of thirds to make your poster more dynamic. Take a look at the photograph itself. I'm going to divide it into thirds, vertically and horizontally. Notice that the presenter is on the first vertical line and the poster is on the second vertical line. Now Note that the picture is cropped so that the presenter's face is on one of the intersecting points. See the circles? By placing the main subject of your poster on one of these intersecting points, you have a more dynamic image. This idea can be used with a poster, photograph, or any other image. Many people choose a formal layout for their poster. What this means is that there is a predetermined order for it. It's very concise, but it's also a little bit mechanical. If you notice, there are even numbers when you look at the quadrants. There are two columns and two rows. Another more interesting layout is the informal layout. Though it seems random, it's really not. It's very determined. Though it's less precise, you use your eye to balance it, and it is a lot more interesting and dynamic. You might also notice that this poster layout uses odd numbers rather than even. Make your title stand out. Make sure that the font is large enough to be seen around the room. Text, if it's too small, will frustrate the viewer if they have to squint to see it. Legibility and readability are two important concepts for creating a great poster. Legibility has to do with how easy it is to see your title from a distance, whereas readability is how comfortable it is to read a long passage of text. Serif fonts have thin lines and feet, making it harder to see them on a screen or at a distance. Whereas sans serif fonts have even lines and no feet. Sans serif fonts are more legible for titles and subtitles. Serif fonts may be easier to read for the body of the text. Examples of serif fonts are Palatino, Times, and Courier, and examples of sans serif are Geneva, Arial, and Helvetica. Use titles and text to draw attention to specific sections of your paper. You can create bullet points or short statements. Use emphasis on key pieces of data. Grouping things in boxes and segregating topic areas is a good way to do this. Make sure you have a clear topic and a clear idea. You also need to make sure that you have a clear focal point. When you have arrows that point off of your poster, this is not focal point. Any image that you use should point to your major topic. For example, you can use an outstanding feature to direct your eye, like a photograph of a person pointing. Relevance. Don't just use pretty pictures. Make sure they relate to your topic, and especially 
Use them to interest your audience in your topic. Poster printing. Layout. Use a program you're familiar with such as PowerPoint, Keynote, or GIMP. Size. If a large poster is hard to transport, consider making it into several smaller posters. Pricing. Poster printing can be expensive, but there are various ways to get it done. See if your school has a print service, check out the various online websites that offer printing, or visit a local print shop and talk to a salesperson about an educational discount. Poster offenses. The poster police have created new laws to ensure that your poster will not get locked up in ugly jail. Here are examples of what not to do. Top 5 Common Poster Offenses Number 1. Not following poster guidelines. Number 2. The two offense. First degree, too busy, not enough white space, and lack of focus. Second degree, too many fonts and too small. Third degree, too many logos. Number 3. Including references equal a waste of space. Number 4. Oversimplified. Number 5. Printing out your paper or PowerPoint as a poster. And even worse, putting them on construction paper with visible tape. Non-examples. Offense number two, second degree, too many fonts or too small. Second offense, third degree, too many logos that are not relevant. Offense one, doesn't follow poster guidelines. Offense 4. Oversimplified. Offense 5. Printing out your paper or PowerPoint. And even worse, visible tape. Don't sit down when you're speaking with people. Get up! It's your time to shine. Award-winning posters. This well-organized poster is clear and simple and comes from a great paper. This poster has nice graphs and easy to read subheads. It's made into two posters for easy transportation. This poster is eye-catching, bright, and beautiful. A real award winner. For more ideas, go to How to Work a Conference to Make it Work for You. Part 1, Strategic Conferencing. Part 2, Intro to Slideshows. Part 3, Guidelines to Visuals 101, Part 4, Guidelines to Visuals 102, Part 5, Presentation Delivery. Then you'll be able to make a truly award-winning poster. Aloha and Mahalo. Catherine Fulford, the University of Hawaii.